right now on 12 at 12 in Arizona's vaccine efforts. Both Pinal and Gila counties have moved on to phase 1B. Who's next in line to get a vaccine? Plus, the polls are open in the Peach State. Why Georgia's runoff elections are so crucial. And saving you money, need to get out of AZ? There's a huge travel sale happening right now that you need to know about. 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app website and YouTube. Hey guys, it's Tram here. Let's get straight to our big story happening right now at noon. The Department of Health Services reported a record high of 253 new deaths today, but 215 of those deaths are from death certificate matching. Arizona's transmission rate also jumped from 0.93 yesterday to 1.12 today. That means a virus is spreading faster. Right now, Arizona has highest COVID-19 case rate in the country. More than 5,900 new cases were reported today as well. The upward trend in COVID-19 cases has forced the Chandler Unified School District to delay their return to in-person learning. Students were supposed to be back in the classroom today, but pressure from teachers and state superintendent Kathy Hoffman convinced the school board to give it another look. But well, we're in a district where we have lost a teacher. <laughs> you know, we have lost staff. So it's not a game. Our teachers are right to be scared and fearful because they don't want to die. I want kids back in school. They, that's where they need to be. The governing board finally heard teachers concerns about safety and we feel like we were finally heard. Well, tomorrow students will be back to virtual learning and stay that way until after the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. That will give the board almost two weeks to consider their next move. Amid the surge and possible holiday spike, the FDA is now saying some people may be getting false negative COVID test results. The false results stem from COVID-19 tests not being administered properly. The agency is recommending to retest anyone who might have gotten an inaccurate result from the test in the past two weeks. The good news, though, another COVID vaccine could soon hit the market. Johnson & Johnson hopes to have their vaccine approved by the end of this month. The company says their trials are on track and will hopefully have enough data to know if their vaccine is safe in the coming weeks. The vaccine is a single dose, unlike Moderna's and Pfizer's vaccine. In Maricopa County, the vaccine rollout has been slow because of a lack of staffing, and we are still in phase 1A. But hopefully we'll be moving on to the next phase soon. Right now, both Gila and Pinal counties have moved on to that next phase, which is phase 1B. So far, ADHS says more than 101,000 Arizonans have received their first dose. Team 12's Jen Wall joins us from Phoenix. And Jen, why is Pinal County ahead, and who will be next in line to get a vaccine? Yeah, in Pinal County, both groups 1A and 1B are now receiving their vaccinations. So that means in addition to the healthcare workers, they're also vaccinating people like law enforcement, teachers, adults 75 and older and more. Now, a few things to keep in mind here. Pinal County is only one tenth of the size of Maricopa County, so a lot fewer people to vaccinate. Also, according to the county, another reason it's been able to move forward to the next group is that appointments to get the vaccine are booked for the next two weeks. In a tweet, Pinal County said registrations for new appointments will not open until at least Monday, January 11th, and they'll let the community know when more appointments are available. Hospitals and other health care providers in Pinal County have also been approved to give out the vaccine. That's allowed more sites to be open. And one health care provider we talked with says that's been key in speeding up the process. It Pinal tried to get it out to a lot of different locations for where the people live, including the teachers and the first responders. The corrections officers are down here. We've got quite a few of them. They tried to get them out to the clinics that are near those places and then make them available as soon as possible to people and get the word out. And the Arizona Department of Health Services says they do expect most of the state to be in that 1B phase vaccination process by the end of this month. And remember, that's people like law enforcement, teachers and adults 75 and older. And then also remember, the vaccine is not expected to be available for the general public until at least the spring. Stay with 12 News for updates there. For now, we're in Phoenix. Jen Wall, 12 News. Jen, thank you. More help is 
on the way for local restaurants. Governor Ducey just announced that the state will be providing an additional $2 million to help AZ restaurants. The governor says he wants to make sure our local restaurants have the ability to expand their outdoor seating and staff to limit the spread of COVID-19. Each of you is going to vote in one of the most important runoff elections in the history of our country. The polls one are state open. can chart the course, not just for the next four years, but for the next generation. The polls are open in the Peach State. It's Election Day in Georgia, and voters will cast their ballots in not just one, but two Senate runoff contests. At stake, who will have overall control of the U.S. Senate? Well, the Democrats have to win both elections to take control of the Senate. The split would be exactly 50-50, but Vice President-elect Kamala Harris would be able to act as a tie-breaking vote. Republicans, on the other hand, would only need to win one seat to take control. In one race, Republican Senator Kelly Loeffler is facing Democrat Raphael Warnock. In the other race, Republican David Perdue is fighting for re-election against Democrat John Ossoff. Back in November, none of the four candidates managed to garner 50% of the vote. That's what triggered today's runoff. Well, mornings are still feeling a little bit chilly, but even if you've been missing the warmer temps, temps guess what? You are in luck. Here's Crystal with your 411 forecast. If you've just been digging our milder afternoon temperatures, well, I think you're going to be totally thrilled to find out that our coldest days on average have come and gone already. Yeah, they're behind us in Phoenix, as well as Tucson and Yuma, Flagstaff. Today's date is at the very end of that range, and Prescott, that day is coming up. But look what I have in store for you this afternoon. Maximum temperatures in Prescott and Flagstaff are going to be in the 50s and more reminiscent of March standards. And for Phoenix, we're feeling like February with a called for high of 72. That would be our first notch in our 70 degree belt this year. And to call for a high of 70 at this point in January so early on, it's only about a 35% shot. We typically cap it off at 66 degrees this time of year. While these mild temperatures come at a cost, that snow is going, going, gone quickly. And we only have two blots left here on the map near Flagstaff. Flag, you've only collected seven inches of snowfall this season. That's it so far for winter. That's 25 inches of snowfall behind where we would typically be at this point in the calendar. And this is usually your month. Well, here's to hoping February delivers at least across Arizona and specifically in Prescott and Payson. That's typically your lucky month for the snowflakes to be flying. There's going to be clouds that enter our skies throughout this week, but they're plain old clouds. Dry weather continues to be our MO and look at all of those highs. We're going to manage to string together in the valley in the 70s. Crystal, thank you. Now to saving you money, if you're planning a trip this spring, Southwest is offering a huge discount on tickets. Between now and Thursday, they'll be selling one-way tickets for as low as 29 bucks. It's for trips between March and April, and Southwest hopes this will keep people traveling after a busier than expected holiday season. Well, this is a story you don't want to miss. Neighbors are calling a Valley woman a hero after she saved the family next door from a house fire. Those dramatic moments all caught on camera in Avondale on New Year's Day. Team Tell's Bianca Bono has the story. Wake up! Ring doorbell video capturing a frantic Carolyn Polish. Carolyn banging on her neighbor's door in Avondale around 7.30 in the morning on New Year's Day because she saw something they didn't. I could see a little flicker, but thought I was seeing things. And I just took off running. And when I came around, the fire was coming out of the side of the entry and also out of the top of the garage. Flames coming out of the home as Carolyn ran to the front door. The Salgado family asleep at the time, only waking up to Carolyn's knocking. Your house on fire. Get out. Move. When she woke us up and she was banging, there was essentially no smoke in the house. Once we came out, like towards the living room, you could see it kind of coming out of the walls and the vents. Nicole Salgado and her husband grabbing their four children, safely getting out. You guys go to my house. And it was just in time. Once the roof did come down, 
That's when all the smoke came out. By that time, it could have been a different story. The Salgado's home suffering extensive damage. The community, though, rallying behind them, already raising more than $30,000 through a GoFundMe page. It's been amazing. The Salgado's now working to rebuild, just grateful to be alive. She saved our life, you know, and we will always be thankful to her. A reminder of the importance of looking out for your neighbor. Things happen for a reason and we're meant to be a certain spot. Oh, what a saint she is. Well, it is time now for In Other News, the stories you may see trending on social media today. A ninth grader English, excuse me, a ninth grade English teacher at Phoenix Country Day School was on Jeopardy last night. He auditioned for months before taping what turned out to be one of Trebek's final episodes. As you know, Trebek died of cancer last year. David Kay says he grew up watching Jeopardy and always wanted to be on the show. Just getting on the show was always a dream of mine. I tried out a number of different years. I got pretty close when I was in college for the college championship, but it ended up not working out. And um, I was very lucky to, to get in um, this year during what would end up being some of his final episodes. Kay went up against a four time reigning champ, but we're not going to tell you how he did. We don't want to spoil anything in case you haven't gotten around to watching last night's episode yet. The final episodes with Alex Trebek will be airing throughout the week. Finally, Indiana will be going mad this March after a very strange 2020. We're all happy to see some things are going back to normal this year, including March Madness. The NCAA says Indiana will host the entire men's basketball tourney this year. Most of the 67 games will take place in Indianapolis, which has a history of hosting the tournament. All teams will stay in controlled environments with required COVID-19 testing and practice courts will be set up at a convention center connected to the hotel where most teams will stay. The Final Four is scheduled to begin on April 3rd with a champion being crowned on April 5th. And that's your 12 at 12, the facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes, no commercials.